So hi folks, uh, welcome back to the SFOM channel and thanks for tuning in. In this particular video, I wanted to discuss a freely available astrophotography software tool, uh, which is called Sequator. Now Sequator is really useful when you're just starting out astrophotography and you want to stack your astrophotography pictures. So in my case, I just returned from my holiday in France and I took multiple pictures of the Milky Way just using a regular DSLR camera and the kit lens so don't expect any miracles in terms of the quality of my Milky Way pictures uh, but anyway um, I found uh, Sequator surprisingly useful and very intuitive software uh, which you can use to stack multiple pictures of the Milky Way together and of course this improves your signal to noise ratio so you will get a brighter and a better picture of the Milky Way and also stacking multiple pictures together it allows you to reduce the noise in your pictures so without further ado let's get into the computer and let's check out this new software tool thing so it's super easy to download sequitur or sequator wherever the accent needs to be uh, onto your computer or desktop or laptop just go to this website sites.google.com slash view slash sequator i will put a link to the uh to the website in the video description below and uh, yeah you can just click on download and the latest version in this case is the 1.6.0 version created on march 14 2021 if you click download just start downloading as a zip file by the way so you need to unpack that zip file and then run the execute file uh, really easy to do i'm sure you will uh, be able to do it so let me quickly show you how to import your pictures into sequitur or sequator <laughs> uh, it's really easy to do but uh, sequitur uses a little bit different terminology as compared to other deep sky astrophotography stacking software tools so let me quickly go through this all uh, first of all uh, sequitur differentiates between star images a base image noise images vignetting images so um, let's discuss those so first of all the star images are just the images you took of a particular object so in my case i took about you can see it here uh, 50 uh, raw pictures of the milky way using my uh, canon d 1200 uh, just using the kit lens uh, and I can just select these 50 images I, I, I wanted to create a time-lapse by the way so that's why I took so many pictures and you can just drag them over to Sequitur and Sequitur will ask you whether or not these images are star images base images noise images etc and of course those images are your light so you will click on star images so star images are actually your light frames it will also automatically select a base image. Um, the base image is just your reference frame that is used uh, by Sequitur to stack all of your images. So you want to select actually the best, uh, the best photo you have of a particular deep sky object and select that as your base image. Um, you can also include noise images in other astrophotography tools. They are just called dark frames. So dark frames are basically frames you take or pictures you take with the landscape on your camera uh, like this. And um, actually you set your uh, pictures to the same exposure time as your light frames. Um, and of course you will then record the noise of the camera itself. You will record any kind of sensor noise or the noise created by the electronics of your camera. You can actually filter out that noise when you include noise images. Well, in this particular session, I also have, uh, I, I created 20 dark frames, or I took 20 dark frames with my, uh, my Canon camera here. Uh, so I will open them up as dark frames. I will include them in the stacking process. And then last but not least, you can also include vignetting. Uh, images and vignetting images just refer to the flat frames you might also have for this particular imaging session i didn't take any flat frames so i will leave that be for now but you can also include flat so that's pretty awesome uh, and of course output you just have to create uh, a particular folder and a name for your stacked picture so you can just right click on output and then click on save as um, so let's create a new um, a new folder here, uh, stacked pictures, and you can click on that folder and then invent the name of your particular deep sky 
picture, your stack picture. I will call it stack one MW. So stack one of the Milky Way. Just save it. And yeah, that's about all you need to know on how to import your images into Sequitur. So now let's get into the different kind of options you have to actually stack your pictures. And before doing so, I just wanted to quickly explain what this red spot is doing on my nose. Uh, well, unfortunately, I crashed into a runaway horse with my bicycle going 30 kilometers an hour or about 20 miles per hour. And I'm still recovering from that unfortunate accident. So uh, unfortunately, we have to deal with this red spot. Sorry for that. And let's get back into Sequitur here. So let me now show you some exciting options you have when you want to stack your images using Sequitur. So the first thing is composition here in the, on the list. Um, lighting stars, when you select that, it, it will just create a stacked image of your individual star images. And that is also something we want to do right now. We want to create a stacked image of the Milky Way. Uh, but if you want, you can also select trails here. And trails basically means that it will create a star trail image of your individual pictures. So it's pretty nice to have. Um, with this stacking software. Uh, computing options, you can choose between accumulation and select best pixels. Accumulation basically means it will take the base image as a reference frame and it will align and stack all of the other star images onto that uh, base image. Whereas when you select best pixels, um, it will look at each of your individual frames. It will of course also align those frames and it engages in Sigma clipping techniques to reject bad pixels and accept high quality pixels basically. So we'll select best pixels for now. Um, freeze ground is super exciting, I think. So when you select freeze ground, this allows you to differentiate between the foreground. So in my case, this is the, the campsite basically with the trees and some lighting and the background, which is of course the sky and uh, the Milky Way. And of course what you have is when you use a static tripod like I did in this wide field image, um, of course the foreground will remain stable throughout the pictures, whereas the stars will appear to move because of this, the Earth's rotation. And yeah, Sequitur uh, allows you to stack the foreground and the background separately, so you will create a sharp or relatively sharp foreground without any shifting, whereas also aligning and creating a sharp background in your picture. So that's pretty unique, I think. I didn't see it a lot in other stacking software uh, tools. Um, what is also interesting is to click on selective here. When you select that selective um, checkbox, basically, it will remove any kind of dynamic objects in your pictures. And you often have it that uh, airplanes go through your images. Um, when you check on selective, it will take care of those airplanes. They will not appear in your stacked image. So that's pretty interesting. Um, Okay, when you want to separate the foreground from the background in your stacking process, then it's also important to click on sky region and basically you need to identify the background from the foreground. Um, you can choose different things like boundary lines. So when you have a very flat horizon, for instance, when you are maybe uh, close to the sea line and you have a very flat horizon, we have that a lot in the Netherlands. Uh, you can just click on boundary line gradient. Uh, same thing, you can, um, use gradient to differentiate between the foreground and the background. But what I, what I like most here is just to use irregular mask. So irregular mask really allows you to paint your uh, picture. And yeah, as the name suggests, it is of course, especially useful when you have an irregular foreground. And in my case, I'm just selecting the sky here. So I'm taking care not to select um, any of the foreground. And it's very easy. You can just uh, click on your left uh, button of your mouse and drag across your picture to select the background. It's very easy. So I think this is pretty nice to be sure. Uh, let's do this. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the next one. So auto brightness. Um, auto brightness is particularly useful when your individual images are a little bit overexposed. So when you have that uh, and you create a stacked image, uh, you often have blown out stars in your stacked picture. Um, and then by um, click, uh, yeah, checking on auto brightness, it will actually take care of that slight overexposure in your individual frames and it will prevent your stars from being blown out. Uh, 
Um, for now, I will check it off because I don't particularly have a very bright picture here. <laughs> um, but please experiment with it yourself, of course. High dynamic range. Um, high dynamic range basically means that uh, it, uh, Sequitur will try to brighten the dark regions in your image, whereas it also tries to darken the very bright uh, stars, for instance, in your image, and it will create the highest dynamic range possible. Um, for now, I will also leave this off, but uh, please experiment with this uh, yourself as well. Um, remove dynamic noise as well. That is, of course, especially useful when you don't, when, when you didn't include any dark frames, for instance. I have here 20 noise images, as they are called in Sequitur. Um, when you don't have these noise images or when you experience that these noise images cannot take care of the noise in your picture, then it really pays off to also uh, check on remove dynamic noises. But as I have some noise images, I will, um, I will not use uh, that option. Uh, reduce distortion effects, also really useful. Maybe I can explain it as follows. When you use a camera lens, eh, it often creates uh, elongated stars across the edges of your field of view. And also when you look at stars close to the horizon, then those stars often um, yeah, they shift a little bit. And uh, at the end of the, in, if you look at your stack picture, you will see elongated stars. So uh, when you reduce those distortion effects, um, Sequitur tries to create pinpoint stars also towards the edges of your field of view and uh, stars that are close to the horizon. Um, you can then select for tally and complex. And I was a little bit uh, confused by that, but uh, tally basically means that when you have used, for instance, a telescope, uh, you, have, you have taken some pictures through a telescope, um, tally will take care of some simple distortion effects. Uh, whereas when you have used a wide angle, a wide field lens, um, a wide field lens usually produces more complex distortion patterns. So then it's better actually to click on complex. So I will do that here. I will click on complex. Um, reduce light pollution is yeah, what it says to be. You can, if you have a lot of gradients due to light pollution in your picture, of course you can turn on light pollution. And uh, you can then also click between deep sky and uneven. Deep sky, I think it works a little bit better, or at least uh, the manual says it works a little bit better on uh, pictures taken with a telescope with only deep sky uh, objects, of course. Um, whereas uneven works a little bit better when you have these wide field astroscape pictures, uh, where you also have a foreground and you want to allow a little bit of um, light pollution here. You can see I have a little bit of light pollution um, right above the campsite, but uh, sometimes it's also nice to keep that glow in your picture. Um, and then you can actually select an even. What is also important is to look at some vignetting and to take care of the vignetting in your picture before using the re uh, reduce light pollution option, which will increase your, uh, your quality of the stacked picture. Um, for now, I will leave it on an even then. Um, enhance starlight. Yeah, it will try to create a little bit of a higher contrast uh, between the stars and the background. So the stars will be uh, a little bit brighter. Um, let's check this on, but again, um, please experiment with this yourself. Um, merge four pixels basically means that you can bin four pixels together into one super pixel. And this usually increases the sensitivity of your picture, but it also reduces your picture size to, in this case, one fourth the size of the original image. I will leave that off for now. Um, you can also create a time lapse. I'm not going to get into that right now, but it will just create a time lapse of your picture, which is also pretty wonderful to have. And uh, color space, yeah, usually you will have sRGB, that, that's uh, the default, uh, but you can also select Adobe RGB or linear if you're interested in another um, yeah, color space here. If you press start, it will create a stacked image, uh, a TIFF file actually of your stacked image. And yeah, it's, it's pretty fast in stacking your pictures. I have uh, quite some options selected here, but still with 50 images, uh, and also dark frames. It only takes about five minutes here to stack all of my images together and create a stacked image of the Milky Way. So that's pretty, pretty wonderful here. 
let me also show you the end result in Photoshop here. So this first picture, you're, you're looking at a single exposure. Um, to be clear, once again, I took these pictures with my Canon 1200D. Uh, in the United States, it's called an old Canon Rebel T5. I think you now have the T7 or even higher. Um, so pretty old camera, but uh, um, yeah, I just used the kit lens as well. I put the kit lens to 18 millimeters. Um, aperture set to f, uh, f ratio 3.5. I took 20 second pictures and the ISO was six, set to 1600. And yeah, let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, so when, when we look at this single exposure, you can see some noise in the picture. I have to say it is quite modest because I have used only ISO 1600 here. Um, but let's compare that to the stack picture. So this is the stack picture. And you can see that the background noise is almost completely gone. So that's really the, 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 the benefit you get out of stacking your picture is that you will reduce the noise in your picture. So pretty important here. Uh, so once again, this is the single exposure. This is the stack picture. The other thing that I'm really excited about is when you look at the foreground, let's go down a little bit. Um, so this is the single exposure and you can see the trees here and also this, this field. It's almost completely uh, black. Whereas when you look at the stack picture, you can see that Sequitur also stacked the foreground here and it did a pretty good job. Um, and I really like seeing that this tree is a little bit green now and uh, yeah, we have more definition in the foreground. Of course, uh, a lot of people who are professional Milky Way astrophotographers, they take separate pictures of the foreground and they mix that with the Milky Way picture. But still, I really like this option, really easy to use and it brings out the foreground a little bit better and also it creates a sharp foreground. I didn't, I don't know a lot of stacking programs that can do that out of the box. So I'm pretty impressed with that one. Um, and yeah, you can of course also see that the Milky Way is a little bit brighter as compared to this single exposure picture, which is also what we expected, of course. Um, so all in all, I was pretty excited by this. And yeah, when we, um, we shift a little bit the curves and we uh, drag the levels a little bit around, um, yeah, then you can create a picture like this. So yeah, this is of course not an award winning picture of the Milky Way with this equipment and only 20 second exposures on a stable tripod. But I'm really excited with the things you can do uh, with some basic uh, equipment. Everybody has a DSLR camera, uh, a stable tripod is available for, I don't know, 20, 30 or 50 bucks. And um, yeah, uh, you can do some pretty exciting stuff like creating uh, this nice Milky Way picture when you are on your holiday at a campsite. So yeah, I hope this information was useful to you. If you found the information useful, please try to subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you again in one of my other videos. And until then, I want to wish you clear skies. Bye bye.